So today we're out in the field at one of our transmitter sites to continue our discussion on how we use IP audio and how we extend it out uh, to our transmission facilities all around the state. And we're at one of our FM uh, transmitter facilities today uh, that is connected by uh, an 11 gigahertz licensed IP radio link from Cambium and it gives us about 500 megabits per second roughly bi-directionally between here and the studio facility that serves it. Um, we're going to give you a little tour uh, of how we do all those things Correct. Uh, right now. Directly out of the Cambium modem we come into a managed Cisco switch. Uh, this is a, a smaller switch, it's only 8 ports with an additional uplink port. Uh, we drive all of our Axia gear off of that switch since so we can apply all the QoS that's necessary. We have a, a dumb Netgear switch on top that uh, drives all of the other non-essential IP traffic such as uh, web UIs for uh, processing and Exciter and all of that sort of thing. At the heart of our audio operation here at the transmitter facility are our uh, Axia nodes. We have a couple of our favorite nodes that are no longer manufactured sadly, the 8 in, 8 out nodes, an analog and an AES node, as well as two uh, X nodes here at the transmitter site for providing uh, audio I.O. as well as GPIO for all of the sources we have here at the transmitter site. On our podcast this past week, we talked about the use of shielded cable in high RF environments. And I think an FM transmitter facility probably rates as a high RF environment. Anything that's connected to one of our nodes, we're using shielded CAT6. And that's just uh, CAT6 that has a metal drain all the way through the cable and then metal connectors on each end that allow uh, all that static and whatnot to, uh, to dissipate uh, without uh, releasing itself into the equipment. My favorite part about having the live wire network extended to the transmitter facility is the ability to connect directly to live wire equipped devices. Like in this case, our Omnia 11 audio processor. What this allows us to do is to plug directly into the Cisco switch above, keeping the audio source for our Omni 11 in the native live wire audio over IP network. From there, we're able to use the really cool patch functionality of this Omni 11 to patch in and out through the AES node in and out of our Arbitron PPM encoders, meaning that we're still exclusively in the digital domain with this audio all the way to the processor. So there you have it, that's a look around our transmission facility and how we extend our IP audio networks and use them out in the field at our location.